Warning. The following games are described for entertainment purposes only. The tape library cannot be held responsible for any incidents that may occur if you decide to reenact these yourself. Please, don't try it. Welcome, one and all, to an evening of games, rituals and mystery. Tonight we are going to explore three games that are reported to allow us to contact a world outside of our own. First off, we're going to be playing a game with a doll. Nothing scary about that, right? Everyone's played hide and seek before. But have you ever experienced that feeling when you're hidden and you can just hear the seeker moving around right next to you? You hold your breath and something on an almost primal level fills your nervous system with adrenaline. Did you know it's possible to play hide and seek alone? Well our first game we're exploring tonight will see you doing just that. Or not playing with another human at least. Dolls play a huge role in the world of Japanese folklore, often used to distract spirits or cleanse people of their sins through rituals. In this case, the doll becomes a vessel, a place to temporarily trap an entity so that you can have some fun. If this spirit wants to engage in your game, however, is a risk you have to be willing to take. First, you need to choose where you will play this game of hide and seek. It needs to be inside and obviously have plenty of good hiding places. Many people choose to play the game in their own home. While this is certainly an option, I personally wouldn't suggest you attempt any of these rituals in your home unless absolutely necessary. It's important that you choose a good hiding place and that you are able to look out from this spot and see the room you are in. These are the items you will need for your game of hide and seek. A doll of some kind, it will need to be stuffed, uncooked rice, a knife or scissors, some red thread and a needle, a pair of nail clippers, a cup of salt water, incense and a lighter, a working television, a sink or bathtub, something large enough to submerge the doll in. Now that you have your items, it's time to prepare your opponent in this twisted game. Cut the doll open using the knife. You need to remove all of the stuffing from inside the doll and replace it with the rice. Then using the nail clippers, cut off a piece of one of your nails and also place that clipping inside the doll. Once you've done that, the surgery is complete. Stitch the doll back up, making sure it's sealed tight. However, when you have finished, don't cut the thread. Instead take what is left, remove the needle and wrap it around the doll tightly. This will keep it contained while you prepare for the rest of the game. Fill the bathtub or sink. Burn incense in the room you plan to hide in. Don't worry, your opponent won't be able to smell it, but it's important to cleanse the room. Then set up the TV close to your hiding spot in the same room. It's important that you can see the TV from where you'll be hiding. All other electronic devices should be turned off throughout the building. Place the cup of salt water and knife near to your hiding spot and return to the doll. It's time to give your opponent a name. What you name it doesn't matter too much, but whatever you do, do not name it after yourself. Now we wait. The game will commence at 3am, so get yourself comfortable until then. Once the clock strikes three, tell your doll that you are it first. Repeat three times to it, your name, and then is the first it. Take the doll to the bathroom and place it in the water that you poured into the bathtub. Then start moving through the building, turning each light off one by one. Enter the room where your hiding place is, turn off the light, turn on the TV, and hide. Take a deep breath. Close your eyes and count to 10 quietly in your head. Don't worry, you have nothing to fear yet. It is simply your turn to be the seeker. Once you finish counting to 10, open your eyes. 
pick up your knife or the scissors and head back to the doll. Remove it from the water and say, I found you, and then whatever you have named the doll. Now it's time for the real game to begin. Cut the doll free from the thread that you have tied it up in. This time repeat three times, you are the next it, and then your doll's name. Put the doll back in the water and leave the knife next to it. You don't have long. Rush back to your hiding spot as quickly as you can. Make sure you can still see the TV. If it starts to behave strangely, maybe flickering, playing odd noises, or even displaying something on the screen that shouldn't be there, then your opponent is close. You cannot turn on any lights. You cannot lock any doors. You cannot leave your home. And whatever you do, do not make a sound. You need to give your opponent enough time to potentially find you. One report of this story saw two people playing together. While hiding, the television started to cycle through channels rapidly. The brief moments of channels flicking through began to form sentences, almost like a spirit box. First, they heard the words, I will find you. That was followed by the approaching sounds of footsteps. Then the TV seemed to say, Where are you? The footsteps then changing direction as they echoed around the house. Before slowly approaching the wardrobe the two players were hiding in. Are you in there? The TV stuttered. One of the two looked through the crack in the wardrobe door. Found you. The TV sinisterly echoed as a knife was plunged directly into that unfortunate player's eye. But hopefully you won't be found. Once enough time has passed for the doll to have had a fair shot at finding you, reach out from your hiding place and take a big sip of that salt water, holding it in your mouth. Bring the cup with the remainder of the water with you and start looking for the doll. It likely won't be in the bathroom anymore, but be quick. When you do find it, pour the remaining water from the cup over its head and spit the water from your mouth at it before shouting, I win, at the doll three times. As long as you have followed the instructions to the letter, the game should be over. Wait for your doll to dry fully, and then burn it. Make sure nothing remains. In the vast majority of cases, this ends things, although the reason I stress that you shouldn't play this in your own home is that some report nighttime visits from the doll even after it has been destroyed. In these games, you never truly know what you are inviting to play with you, and whether it is happy to play by the rules. I did an episode on these creepy urban legend games last year, and had a lot of fun with it. So here we are again with a bunch more for you to explore. Frequent patrons of the tape library may have noticed that we've been gone for a while, but don't worry, we're back for good now. And I've got a lot of really creepy stories to bring you soon. So if you haven't already, then please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Let's get into our second game of the evening, shall we? This one should hopefully encourage a more positive interaction with the spirit world. It's called the hosting game, or some refer to it under the more unsettling name of Don't Look Back. You're inviting some guests from the other world into your home, but just be careful some may not want to leave. First, choose a room to host in. You want it to be a small dark room, ideally with no windows. If it does have windows, then I suggest you cover them up. For this ritual, you will need an analog clock or watch, a piece of paper and a pen, and three matches. It's worth having a torch on hand as well, just in case. You can begin the hosting game once it gets dark. Turn off every source of noise in your home such as TVs, phones or any other electronic devices. Then turn off all the lights. Make sure any windows are blocked out. You don't want any light getting into your hosting room from outside sources. Bring all your items to the hosting. 
You can turn on the light or use the torch while you're getting set up in there. The paper and pen should stay in the hosting room, but the watch and matches should stay on you. You will need them at all times. Leave the hosting room, with the light or torch still on, and the door open. Head to the room in your home that is furthest away from the hosting room. Once there, say out loud, I will be ready soon. Then start heading back towards the hosting room. Stopping in every room of your house along the way and saying, I'll be ready soon, in each room. Once you are back in the hosting room, you can begin to invite your guests in. Pick up your pen and write on the paper. You're invited. A gathering hosted by your name, between whatever the current time is, and whatever the time will be in one hour. Friends welcome. Place the invitation in the middle of the hosting room, then stand in the doorway, facing into the hosting room, and say, I'm ready. Come on in. Turn off the light and turn around, facing out into the darkness of the rest of your home. Or if you followed my previous advice, whatever building you are currently playing in. Take out a match and count to ten out loud. Do not look behind you into your hosting room. Light the first match as you say the number ten. If it lights on the first strike, this is good. Hold the match as it burns and politely welcome your guests in. You may not be able to see them, but they are there. Wait until you can't hold the match any longer and blow it out. If the match doesn't light on the first strike, remain calm. Things might not be going to plan, but it's important not to panic. Drop the match immediately and do not look behind you. Regardless of if the match lit, it's time to light the next one. Again, if the second match lights on its first strike, then more of your guests are arriving be polite, be friendly. Hold the match until it gets close to your fingers, and then blow it out. Again, if it doesn't ignite on that first strike, drop it and move on to the next step. Please, do not look behind you. Now on to the third match. If it lights on the first attempt, the party can begin. Say out loud, now everybody is here and count to ten again, holding the burning match for as long as you can. This is when you may start to hear your guests in the room behind you. Soft talking, shuffling, maybe even the occasional thank you. Keep an eye on the watch. It's always important to use an analog watch in these circumstances. Digital ones seem to be able to be manipulated easily. Do not look back into your hosting room. This party is not for you, it's for your guests. Stand in the doorway looking out while they enjoy themselves. Wait an hour and then bid your guests farewell. Say out loud, thank you for coming, goodbye. Do not ask them to come again. Doing so may open up a path that you don't want. Then head to the closest light switch that is away from the hosting room and turn it on. But, what if that third match also didn't light on the first strike? A match not lighting signifies that an unwelcome guest has attended the gathering. If this happens a third time, this is not good. Abort the ritual by running to the closest light switch away from your hosting room and flicking it on. Do not look behind you until that light is on. Turning the light on should be enough to end the party. But depending on who that unwanted guest is, they may simply retreat into the darkened corners of your home, waiting to make their presence known. There are so many of these games to explore out there. Some have sprung up online over recent years and have essentially become internet urban legends but others seem to date back much longer than that, to times when rituals were more commonplace. Perhaps some of these aren't just fun, creepy stories, but there is some truth to them. A way to interact with a world outside of our own. 
If you want me to cover more of these games, then please let me know in the comments. I've included a link to the first part of the series as well, if you haven't seen that yet. Okay, let's get into our final game of the evening. I've left the most dangerous one for last. This is a game that is only intended for those who wish to never be seen again. Where you will end up is unclear, but no one who has managed to perform this ritual successfully has ever been heard from again. This is the wardrobe to another world. First, as you should be used to by now, you will need to gather some supplies. For this game we will require the following items. A sheet of paper, a pen, ideally a brush pen, but a felt tip should work just as well. Two drinking glasses, it's important that these are identical. Water in a small pitcher. A cardboard box large enough for you to comfortably get into. And a wardrobe that is big enough to fit both yourself and all your items in. It's not essential, but it might be worth bringing along a calculator. We're going to be doing some equations. I know, right? Clearly we're in store for a fun game if maths is involved. It's best to begin the game at night time. Take all your items to the room that your chosen wardrobe or closet is located. Turn off all the lights, blocking out any windows if necessary to avoid any light getting into the room. You want to be sure that once you close the wardrobe door, no outside light is visible. This is where your mathematics skills or calculator will come in handy. Take your age and square it. For example, if you are 20 years old, then the square of 20 is 400. Remember whatever your answer is, do not forget it. Write your name on the piece of paper, then fill one of your drinking glasses. The room will be dark, so it's very important you are careful here. You do not want to break either of your glasses. You need to make that glass about one seventh full. That's it, no more. It can be approximate, but try and get it as close to one seventh full as you can. Open the wardrobe door and place the box inside. Bring your paper and both drinking glasses with you. Close the wardrobe door. If you notice any cracks of light getting into the wardrobe, then make sure you block these somehow. You need to be in total darkness. While still holding both glasses and the piece of paper with your name on it, step into the box and sit down. Place the piece of paper into the glass that has the water in it. What was that number again? Make sure you remember. Close your eyes and focus all your attention on that number. Begin counting to your number. Try to keep it to the beat of your heartbeat. Hopefully that's slow, but if it's racing, then take a moment to take a deep breath and calm down a little. When you reach your number, open your eyes and pour the combination of water and paper from the one glass into the other empty one. The ritual is complete. Stand up, open the wardrobe door and step out into it. Things might not look that different. It might require a bit of exploring. But soon you'll begin to notice things are a little... off. Items in your home may not quite be how you remember them. People, if there are even any around, might not quite be acting how you would expect them to act. The sun may never rise again. And much like the elevator game that we covered in the previous episode, looking outside might show you that this world you have entered is a very different place to the one you just left. Some say it's possible to return home by reversing the ritual, pouring the water and paper back into the other glass and counting backwards until you can step back out into your world. But no one has ever been able to directly claim they've achieved this to my knowledge. You knew when we started this game that you very likely wouldn't be able to come back, so you best start making the most of your new home. I hope wherever you end up, it's a safe and peaceful one. But based on how many of these games that take us to the other side end up, I'm not holding my breath for you, I'm afraid. That's all for this entry into the tape library. If you want to check out more creepy games to play in the dark, 
check out the video on the left, or click the right for the true story behind a horrifying modern urban legend. If you haven't already then please do hit subscribe if you want to hear more creepy stories. Until next time, pleasant dreams.